Hey guys, I'm Pat, and this video is going to be uh, the next video, second video in my uh, beginner scripting series, and this video will go over variables and basic data types in uh, Lua. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and make a script and server script service, so that way we can get into writing some code. And uh, first, I'm just going to explain a little bit like what a variable is and what it does. So you can think of a variable as a, a method of storing data, uh, a way of storing information like numbers, text, uh, things like that. And that information can be used later on in the scripts for uh, multiple things and it can also be changed or adjusted or reset whatever later on to uh, be used in different things, whatever, right? So the way we make a variable is we first start off with uh, our uh, scope, which is local. Uh, every time you make a variable, you should use local. Uh, you can define a variable without local, but it's bad practice and it's actually uh, worse on performance than using local. So, recommended to use local when you're making variables. Everybody else does it. You should do it too, good practice, whatever, right? And then all, after that, you just hit space. Uh, you hit space and then you can put in the name of the variable. You can, it can be any word, right? But it can't start with a number and it can't, it can actually start with a special character, I guess, not a slash not parentheses or brackets, anything like that. Most of the time you're just gonna use a word. A lot of people just make all their variables lowercase uh, in Lua, I guess, but me, I don't really have a pattern for how I uh, name my variables, but you can just name it whatever. We're just going to name a variable X for now. Usually you're gonna want to give it a proper name so you know what the variable actually does. You don't want to give it a single letter name because that's usually bad practice. And then after you put an equal sign, uh, you can have a space here. You don't have to, but it's better to, it's a lot easier to read if you have a space here. Also, you can see these little dots here. Uh, those aren't anything, don't worry about those. Those are just uh, representing spaces. So don't think that's some kind of special character. Those are just spaces. And then, so I got the equal sign, and the equal sign, what's that doing, is it's assigning a value to the variable. If we wanted to, we could just type local x, and there we created a variable, but we want to actually put uh, data or information inside our variable. So we use the equal sign to assign, uh, assign data to this variable and store it inside it. So it's, uh, it's called the assignment operator or whatever, right? And then after that, we can just put like a number like 121 or whatever. And there we store the number 121 in X. So now whenever we use X in our script, it'll be the same as 121. And we can also add or subtract from that variable. And now something to take note is in Lua, in any programming language actually, there's multiple different data types that you can store in a variable. So the first one obviously would be a number. Uh, so a number in Lua is, it can be a whole number. It can also be a decimal. So we can have like 121.10 like that. And it can also be a negative number as well. So you can put this uh, minus symbol in front to represent it being a negative number, obviously. But there's also an integer, which is a whole number. Now, these data types aren't necessarily too important to you to know the difference between a number and an integer, but an integer is just a whole number, and a number has a decimal place. Integer doesn't. Just know that, you know, a number is a its own data type. And then, next one would be a string. So, a string, you actually have to use quotes for it. So, a number you don't need to uh, represent you typing number in any way, as long as you just type a number alone, it knows that it's a number or an integer. But when you use quotes, that tells it that it's a string. And inside the quotes, 
Uh, string is a type of data that stores text. So usually you'll have like numbers and words in there. You can put all kinds of stuff in there. So we could just type in like hello world or something in there. And now we have the string hello world stored inside of X. So now X is the same thing as hello world. And then the last data type would be Boolean, which is true or false. Uh, pretty simple like that. It's either true or it's false. You don't need to use quotes. You just type true or you type false, all lowercase. Uh, you can't use a capital or else it doesn't work. So it's either true or it's false. So that's good for things like quest, uh, check mark, like check boxes. If you want something to be true or false, you know, you'll be using a check box or stuff like that. And uh, yeah, so it's not necessarily too important for you to know uh, the data types that are being uh, stored in variables. It kind of is, but it's Im not right now. Like it's not important for you to know data types right now, but in the future, you should take note of what data types are and what the different types of data represents. So that way you understand that there's different ways to represent data because there's a, a lot of differences in how you change and use that data in the future. So in here, we're just going to make a variable for uh, 10 and then we can make another variable called Y and we can set it to five. And then we can make a variable called sum and we can make it to equal X plus Y. So we can do math as well with the variables, just X plus Y. It's really that easy. We can also uh, subtract with the minus. We can divide with the slash. We can also uh, multiply with the star uh, using shift eight. We can, I guess that's all I want to go over for now. As we can also do uh, to the power. If you know what that is, you just shift six and then that'll be X to the power of Y. So 10 to the power of five, whatever. But we're just going to do X plus Y. And then if you remember in our last video, we learned print and we can actually print out variables so we can print out, uh, we're going to do multiple prints. So we'll do X, Y, and we'll do sum. And you can also see that the autofill will automatically add your variable name. So try and autofill your variable names when you're writing them as well. So now if we go ahead and uh, show the output, we can test and we can click run and you'll see in the output we get our numbers. So 10, 5, and then 10 plus 5 is 15. Now this is kind of useless because we don't actually know like what 10, 5, or 15 are. So we can actually put a string in front of this to uh, give it text. We can say X and then we can put like a colon or we can put like an equal sign too. And then this would be a string, right? So we're printing out a string but you can see we have an underline here because it doesn't know what to do with this X here now. And in order to combine a string with another string or with a variable, you can use the dot dot. This is called concatenation, concatting, whatever. It's kind of a weird word, but you don't really need to know that word too much. I mean, you kind of do, but whatever. This is, that's just what it is. So use dot dot and it allows you to combine a string with like a variable or another string and now this variable, when it's combined with this string, it becomes a string. So now this variable is part of the string instead of it just being its own variable, its own number. So now it's no longer a number, it's a string, right? So we can also do that with the other variables. We can do y equals y, and we can do sum equals sum, whatever. And now once we uh, <clears throat> run it, you can see it says x equals 10, y equals 5, sum equals 15, right? Pretty easy like that. So you can actually define multiple variables in one line of code. So if we wanted to define x and y in one line, we could actually do it like this. We just add a comma after the first variable name. And then we pipe in our second variable. And then when we assign the value, we put a comma and then we put our second value. So you can see X is the first variable here. And then 10 is also the first number here. So 10 will be assigned to X. And since Y is the second one, it'll be assigned to five. Uh, 
you don't really need to know this. It's not something that is commonly used. There's only like one case where it's really used kind of often, but it can be kind of useful. Uh, some people prefer to make their variables this way. I don't usually make them this way unless I'm using a function. You don't know what that is, but that's not important right now. But you can see we can do this and then we can run it the same and we should get the same output, 10, 5, 15. So it's the same as before, right? Now, if you notice when we go to, when we close out of this, we can click on semi cool 15 and you'll see it'll immediately take us to this line and it'll have this line highlighted. If we click Y equals five, it'll take us to this line and it'll immediately have it highlighted. So that's just kind of useful to know when you're using prints, you can easily get to where the, which print is printing out. So you know which print is printing out, but usually you'll know just by what it's printing but that's something useful to know right one last thing i guess would be for me to go over comments uh this isn't really a script where you need comments i guess it's kind of self-explanatory but comments are just a way for you to add text in your scripts it, they don't actually do anything as far as helping the script run or anything like that they're kind of ignored when their script runs but they allow the reader to have a way to make their scripts kind of visually appealing or easier to read or you know ways of summing up what parts of a script does without the reader having to read over and trace what that part of the script is doing so right here we can just uh, say that we are getting the sum of x and y if I can spell right and then up here we can say that we're declaring variables x and y so when you make a variable you call it you uh when you declare a variable you use local i guess i actually forgot to say this but when you use a variable a second time like if we're taking x and we're setting it see we can do this just the same actually i should have gone over this earlier but uh, <laughs> we can actually set x to 20 now here and you can see we don't use local because local would mean that we're redefining the variable, but that's not what we're doing. We're just changing the number in X to 20. We can also set X to be uh, X plus 20, but the, there's actually an easier way of doing X plus 20. We can actually just do X plus equals 20. So now what we're doing is we're taking this value here and we're just adding it to the value that's already in x we can also do minus equals times equals divided equals you know the same so you can see now once we uh, run this it will give us a different output than before now i'll say x is 20 y is 5 and then 25 will be the sum instead right uh one last thing is what we'll do is i'll just add this so now you'll, we see x plus y times 2 would be the new sum. So if we hit run, we'll see that we get 30. So that doesn't make sense because 25 times 2 would be 50, right? Well, if you know PEMDAS, you can realize that it takes into account PEMDAS. So what it does is it does y times 2 first because multiplication is done before addition and subtraction in PEMDAS. So y times 2 would be 10 plus 20 would be 30 and that's how we got our sum of 30 there. You can actually use uh, parentheses uh, or some people call them brackets, I call them parentheses. You should call them parentheses too. But we can use uh, parentheses around x plus y to do x plus y first and then we'll do the multiplication after because parentheses comes before multiplication in PEMDAS. So now this time we'll get 50. You can see in the output, right? Um, I'm pretty sure that's all there are to go over variables. That's all there is for variables for now. Uh, next video we'll go over if statements and conditions. And uh, yeah, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys later.